Well, uh, welcome everyone to the late afternoon session of East Africa Day at Leiden University. I'm very happy to welcome, for the second time, Martin Maus. He's here presenting on a new research, and in fact, all four presentations that are happening in this room right now are about new research projects that are taking place here at Leiden University. So uh, please join me in welcoming Martin Mouse as he presents on Unraveling East Africa's Early Linguistic History. Thank you. Um, very happy to be here, very excited uh, to have this beginning of, 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 of very intense uh, research on East Africa for the coming years. Um, unraveling East Africa's Early Linguistic History uh, but I want to thank Martin first for stimulating me, Martin Kosman, to, to develop this project and to go on and to, uh, and to share his enthusiasm f with me for this project. It, it, among us it's called, uh, uh, what is it? Lucy's Lost Lexicon. <laughs> but we thought maybe for NWO there was a little bit uh, not really acceptable. Let me see if this works. Yes, it does. Maybe I go to the map first. Can you see the map? It's maybe not a bit vague at the, at the back. Is it visible enough? Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether you should pay too much attention to the colors. As many of you know, I'm, I'm not very strong in this. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's a map of East Africa, <laughs> and it shows, uh, it, it shows first of all, uh, the, the enormous linguistic diversity of East Africa. So, I mean, here I see Indo-European here, um, okay, uh, we sometimes, we talk about substrates in Indo-European, and we, uh, but, and we have, uh, well, some different uh, families there. But in, uh, in East Africa, in this small area even of Tanzania and Kenya, and this is the interpretation of East Africa that I will take in this project, there is the important players are, I start with Cushitic because I work on Cushitic, uh, which is ultimately Afroasiatic. So that is the one family. Uh, you'll see it up in the north in, in Ethiopia where the widest spread and diversity of Cushitic languages is, but it goes all the way down to appropriate called South Cushitic. I, is that? Oh yes, here. Uh, where I did m most of my research on. Um, then uh, we also have uh, Bantu. Bantu languages are part of the Niger-Congo family, so they are a huge group, 500 plus languages, all southern Africa, and ultimately they must, must have come from the, uh, the Cameroon-Nigerian border area, more or less there. So um, the, the next group is Nilotic, Nilotic uh, which is ultimately part of Nile Saharan, where uh, that complete family is valid or not, that is not that much of interest to us because the languages of that major family that we are concerned with in East Africa is Nilotic, which is firmly established as, as a, a family, a sub-sub-sub-family. Um, we have to introduce uh, Sandawe. Um, Sandawe is a click language, uh, Hadza is also a click language. So I think that m my uh, working hypothesis is that Sandawa is ultimately related to some of the click languages in South Africa. And um, since the dissertation by Bonnie Sands, I think m people are convinced that Hadza, the other language in East Africa with clicks, is clearly not. So we have, if you count it, five families in the uh, in East uh, Africa, uh, which makes it a very interesting area to, to study the history, to recognize language contact, to, but in order to do that properly, we need to know uh, the, the reconstruction of these uh, families that I mentioned. Um, so the, uh, 
The purpose of the project is to, to, to unraveling the early linguistic past, the, the idea uh, about history that makes it to the school books in, uh, presently in East Africa is that, okay, you had people living there, hunter-gatherers, probably related to the Sandawa and the Hadza, and then later Cushitic people came from the north and they brought agriculture. And then we had Bantu people uh, probably also bringing more advanced agriculture and iron, and then uh, still later Nilotic people coming in with their weird uh, cattle culture. Um, and that is uh, that kind of uh, uh, scenario was the result of a linking of the linguistic uh, reconstruction in these major linguistic families and then connected to archaeological uh, overall analyses of huge cultures. And they were linked to uh, the Cushitic uh, to one, Nalotic to one, and uh, the Hadza Sandawa to the other one. Um, what there's lots have happened in, in, in archaeology since, since the, that dominant view of the 60s. And people are not, archaeologists are not thinking anymore in those huge cultures, but they see much more in contact zones with different kind of uh, elements, uh, cultures together. Um, but in terms of what has happened in linguistics is that, okay, we have seen a revolution in, in linguistic description. We know a lot more of many of the languages in, in the area concerned, but also the languages that are related to. But very little has been done in actual linguistic reconstruction since the 70s. Um, so what does the project uh, want to do? We want to have the idea that the, the, the earliest uh, scheme of those three movements is likely to be a little bit too simplistic. There are some indications that the, the Cushitic movement was not one movement and things like that. And I think we've been suffering from the bluntness of Occam's razor to, to assume that, okay, this is the, the, e the easiest uh, explanation is that there is only one, and history can be a little bit more uh, complex than, uh, than, than what we're forced to think using that. So um, what I, what I, and I'm so happy with the project because uh, yeah, Martin forced me to do something that I thought, this is what I really want to do. This is what I really want to find out. And the last decades I've been working a lot on, on uh, projects, uh, getting them financed, helping people with their project, and uh, getting my own, but with other people in mind. This is a very selfish one. This is what I want to know. Um, well, this is too much text to read, so I think I'll better skip it, but skimming through it, you see also DNA and, and, and genetic, and, uh, and what is it? Uh, archaeology. We are going to do that, but not in the project itself. So the project is simply uh, dedicated to the historical linguistics, the reconstruction of the, of the families and the reconstruction of, of contact. And uh, at the end of it, we will make sure that we are aware of, of the relevant literature in, in, uh, in archaeology and in genetic uh, studies. We'll make links, we'll, we, we will talk to these people, and at the very end we will have a, a workshop bringing all these disciplines together and, and, and have an edited volume about that and see that as the beginning of the, the multidisciplinary uh, exchange uh, for these uh, various disciplines. Um, so how can we do that? Um, for the three major families that I mentioned, that would be Cushitic, Bantu, Nilotic. Uh, the, the, for Cushitic, we have something like a beginning of a reconstruction that is reliable, but rudimentary. So we, we have a, a s lexical reconstruction from uh, yeah, a few 20, 30 words. Uh, it's not very many if you want to check whether a certain word in Bantu language X that is not clearly not Bantu 
is that Cushitic or not, we don't have enough reconstructed Cushitic material to, uh, to say something about that most of the time. And we want to do that. Because uh, what has been the, uh, the, the practice uh, so far is quite shocking, actually. We find a lot of non-Bantu material in the Bantu languages in East Africa. They have been simply labeled Cushitic without any positive evidence for the Cushitic link. So we have want to sift that out and we want to say, okay, which ones can we actually uh, see as uh, definitely Cushitic and which ones are factor X. Uh, once we've done that, um, in order to do that, we have to also look at Nilotic because Cushitic and Nilotic have been in contact a lot during the centuries. So we will have to fine tune out it which, which places and which points in time have they been in contact. Once we have done that, then we can look at factor X. And factor X is X, Y, Z, etc. We don't know, of course. But that is where it comes a little bit uh, more um, yeah, uh, uh, shaky ground. And in order to, to, to look at the possible sources of factor X, Y, Z, etc., um, we will certainly be uh, comparing the, the materials to uh, Hadza. We have a much better understanding of Hadza already, lexically. But here we have two people going to work on Hadza, so I'm very excited about that. We have Sandawe. There have been a number of publications on Sandawe over the last decade, and also some material, lexical material, has been uh, um, re-edited and made the, uh, publicly available. So we are better positioned there. Uh, uh, let me skip Mbugu. Dahalo. Dahalo, you will see that in any classification as a Cushitic language, but it has a click. So people working on the history of Dahalo will say, well, this is probably one of those groups of, uh, of, of you know, um, hunter-gatherers working, uh, living among a most mightier group of people that have shifted language, because that's the pattern that we see time and time again. We see small groups of hunter-gatherers that live among the Maasai, among the, uh, uh, among the uh, what do you have there, the, the Rendile, and they shift to the language of the masters, and that may have happened there too. Um, so Dahalo vocabulary is also interesting for us to see if there's more that we can connect to the unaccounted for uh, lexicon in the languages of, of East Africa. And then the South Omotic. Yes, Sara does South Omotic. Uh, so we know a little bit more about South Omotic and she's going to do work more on South Omotic. And why do I want to have a reconstruction of South Omotic? Because it has some strange things there. So uh, the Omotic used to be part of the Cushitic family, but people have said, well, it's so deviant. We have to give it its own name, its own branch. That is Omotic. But within Omotic, we have South Omotic and the rest. South Omotic is just four or five languages. Uh, for a large part, it looks very Cushitic, but then there are all sorts of other things. So we don't know whether South Omotic is actually Omotic and Afroasiatic, or maybe uh, yet another language family. And maybe we're just seeing ghosts there, but in order to know for sure, we'll have to do a reconstruction and see how that fits with all the other lexical material that we have. So in practical uh, terms, the, uh, the uh, uh, project, uh, uh, what is this? Okay, we'll look at, all, all, <laughs> all the arrows are gone. <laughs> we'll look at the Bantu languages. We'll look at Cushitic and Nilotic and how they've uh, influenced each other. And then we'll look at the whole area in, early East, uh, in East Africa and see all these different ones. Can we see patterns in the, in the factor X is so that we can divide it up in X, Y, and Z and see, okay, maybe in, in the phonotactics, this, this group of words seems to uh, point out to a, to a coherent substrate. What we will, okay, we will use this reflex that is just a database 
that is used in Paris for helping you to, to put words together and to do the reconstruction. The reconstruction is done by hand. The program is just to help you to, to, uh, to put things together and to see the patterns. Um, the, uh, in practical terms, um, I'm, I'm looking uh, for um, a PhD student to, to get the Cushitic reconstruction further. Uh, what is the biggest challenge in that? The biggest challenge in that is that South Cushitic is, according to all the specialists, part of Eastern Cushitic, but we don't know where it fits in. So that will need probably a lot of morphological uh, reconstruction, see whether there is shared innovation in the morphology. Uh, and then, of course, a lot of hard work to go through all the lexical material to expand those 20, 30 words to 2000 or something. Uh, then there will be a, a PhD student in Addis Ababa. The money will go to Addis Ababa. They will employ a PhD student. But I will help in the supervision to reconstruct uh, South Omotic. Uh, we'll have a postdoc. A uh, postdoc will start later. So I haven't advertised that yet. The postdoc will work together with me on the uh, issues uh, that I mentioned uh, to see whether we can recognize uh, substrate vocabulary, how we can tease out the, cu the Cushitic nilotic uh, contact, and uh, to, to present the overview that we'll have to present in the end at the final workshop of our view of the linguistic history of East Africa as far back as we can go. Won't be Lucy, won't be even close to Lucy but as far back as we can go. Thank you.